All right, guys, so in the second part, we're going to be setting up the Windows 10 machine. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. You're going to open up VirtualBox, and then you're going to machine, new, and we're going to do the same process that we did earlier with the Windows 2019 server, except this time you're going to type in Windows 10. Now you can choose another location for your machine. We're just choosing where we want the VM to be stored. I already have a folder in mine. And you can choose a default location if you want. Just make sure there's sufficient storage on there. All right, and then we're gonna click next. Uh, next, create, next, create. And so we're gonna just choose all our default settings. We're gonna open up the virtual machine. Okay, and then it's gonna ask us for an image. So we're gonna have to uh, navigate to the folder where we downloaded our image. And if uh, you remember from the first video, I provided you a link where you can go to actually download that. And so for this, you're just gonna go to your Windows 10 folder or wherever you downloaded that image. You're gonna map that image and then you're gonna start it. All right, and then it's gonna go ahead and boot off of that image. Okay, now it's booting into Windows 10 here. So we'll give that a second for it to start up. We're gonna click uh, next on this screen right here. Install now. And it says the uh, startup setup is starting. Okay, so we'll just wait for this to, to finish for a second. All right, and then we accept the license term and agreements. Go to custom, next. And at this point, it is installing Windows. Okay, and this could take a while, depending on how much RAM you have on your computer and your current specs but uh for, for my computer it's not taking too long at the time of this recording i only had 16 uh, gigs of ram so it it took a little bit longer but now i've got 32 so future lab should be a little quicker all right so it's still going i'm gonna see if we can fast forward this portion Okay, and I just fast forwarded that. Now it's saying getting ready, and then it's telling you select your region. You can select the United States or whichever region you're currently in. And then it says, um, you can go ahead and click yes on this one. Skip, and we'll just give it a moment. All right, it's doing some important setups. All right, for this portion right here, we're going to choose Domain Join instead. It's asking us uh, who's going to use this PC. We're just type in admin and next. Create a super memorable password. So uh, I would say just password, something that you can remember because we don't want to get locked out here. OK. And if you need to put special characters, you can use at symbol for the A. So P at symbol SSWOD. All right. It's asking for some security questions here. I just asked for name of pet. I put pet. It's asking for your childhood nickname, but nickname. And the city where your parents met, a uh, city. So. All right, we'll just wait a moment for that to, to load. And for this portion, choose privacy settings for your device. We'll go ahead and deselect um, some of these settings here. We'll click accept, not now. And 
it says, hi, so it looks like we're logging into our profile here, which is great. All right, so we're logged in, kind of fast forward to that port a little bit, and looks like the startups are running here. So we'll type in system information. Oh, actually, don't need that. Just going to about your PC. And it gives you the option to rename the PC here. I think we'll do it through the control panel. So let's go ahead and close that out. And rather than renaming it there, uh, we'll, we'll choose the control panel. So advanced settings, computer name, change, and then we can actually do it through here. Okay, so we can do it through here. And we're just gonna input win 10. <laughs> And then for the domain name, we're going to type in itlab.com. All right. Looks like I'm having some issues connecting to it. I have to go to my settings. And then I have to go to network. And I have to make sure that it's set to internal network. Because if you remember, we had set the Windows 2019 server to internal, internal network. So we have to do the same for the Windows 10. All right, and then uh, once we do that, you can see I'm going to my Windows 2019 server. We have that one set to internal network as well. All right, so it looks like it's detecting itlabs.com, and we're going to try connecting once more, see if it lets us connect to the domain. All right, great, and it's asking for our domain credentials, so we're going to type in administrator, and then we're going to type in the password that we uh, used to log in as the administrator, which should be password, all right? And saying welcome to itlabs.com. We have to restart the computer, join the domain. We'll restart it now. And there we go. All right, we'll go to input, control, delete. Uh, you can see here, it gives us the option to log in to IT lab. So we'll type in IT lab in the other users and then slash administrator and we'll type in our password as for the administrator and now we're logging in with our domain administrator credentials all right great so we're logged in now and you can see we are connected to the domain um, and to check that i put my 2019 server and 2010 machine side by side and i tried pinging the domain controller Right, so ping DC1, and that ping went through successfully. Then I tried to enter a PS session, so I opened up PowerShell. And then, so you open up PowerShell as an administrator, and then you go to enter PS session, so enter dash PS session, DC1. And you can see I was able to um, enter that PS session with the domain controller. So they're connected, they can talk to one another, they can ping one another, and this is what we need. So next, what we'll do is we'll set up the internet so that both of these uh, machines will have internet connectivity as well. All right, so let's go ahead and do that next. All right, so in this next part, we're going to be setting up the internet for Windows 10 and 2019 uh, machines here. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to power both of them off. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to change some of the settings that we need to within VirtualBox. If you try changing them, it wouldn't allow you to because they would be grayed out. So that's why we need to power these off and it's very important that we do so. So let's go ahead and power these off. And then afterwards, um, we'll go ahead and let's forward a few, min a few minutes here. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we are going to, from VirtualBox, go to preference and then network, okay? And once we go to preference and network, you'll see that I've added NAT network here, which isn't there by default. And you just click on this plus icon here and we'll be able to add that um, like the following, right? So click on that. And then you can see how it says enable network and then you have name NAT network. And then we have the network CIDR 192.168.4.0 slash 24 and the network option support DHCP. And then you click okay. So you need to make sure that you have all these options here. Again, I'm gonna pause it so you can go ahead and ensure that your um, options look like that. Okay, we'll go ahead and carry on. All right, with, with that 
set. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the Windows 2019 server settings, and then we're going to network. And you see I have adapter two here. I'm just going to enable it, and then I'm going to select NAT network. And then for the name, I'm going to select NAT network. OK. And then we're going to do the same thing for the Windows 10 host. Um, so let's go ahead and let me show you that. So for the Windows 10 host, once you have the network tab open, you can see for the second adapter, you're just going to input enable network adapter, NAT network, and then you're going to choose uh, NAT network for that. Okay. And you can leave the first adapter alone, so you don't have to change that, just, just that one. Okay. So, all right, next thing we're going to do is start up the Windows server. So you want to always start up the Windows server first before you start up the Windows client. That way, um, your server is up and running. All the services are up and running, DHCP, DNS, and Active Directory. So when your client starts up, it can get that IP address and be connected to the domain. All right, so I'm just starting this up. All right, and I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward that a bit so we can just get logged in here. So we'll send the input, draw, delete. Then we'll enter our password. And once we do that, we'll go ahead and wait for the startups to load. I'm going to fast forward this a little bit. You can see it says itlab.com, no internet. OK. And you click on that network and internet setting down there. And then we go to Ethernet. And you can see I have two adapters now. I have one for itlab.com connected, another for itlab no internet. OK, so we're going to test out that internet connectivity. So you can open up Internet Explorer, um, which is the only app installed on the Windows server, unfortunately. Um, but you can go to google.com. And now what it's going to allow us to do is connect to the internet so that we can carry on with the rest of our labs. Perfect. So that's connected and up and running. If you wanted to, you can install Google because we all know uh, Internet Explorer is just not the greatest. If you receive these prompts, you could just click OK on them. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the Windows 10 host here. And I'll just fast forward. So let's say uh, once you're logged in there, and you're going to open up Edge, and you're going to notice that you have internet connectivity as well. So you can go in there, and you could just type in uh, Google, and you should be able to bring Google up. Granted, you might have to wait a second for it to load, but um, should be up and running. So we're able to get Google up. Uh, we're able to open up PowerShell. So you could open up Windows PowerShell here. And I'm just going to ping DC1. And you can see I can still ping DC1. So there's still that internal uh, connection. And I'm still able to uh, PS session into DC1 as well. So I was able to PowerShell into DC1. So now we have full connectivity. Uh, we have internet connectivity, and we have internal connectivity to our domain controller. All right, so let's carry on with the next video, where we'll be um, installing software or carry on with the rest of our labs.